Bushiroad, you let her down. You really did. What is up you guys and welcome to the Prime Vanguard channel. Before I hop into today's video, I do want to say that if you have one or fewer of my videos, you know that I'm now into a new space. I now get a little ability to flex and move around and have more space to just get everything all set up. So my videos will be set up like this. If my audio is any better, isn't any better than the last video, please go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. And hopefully I'll have my little spot uh, decked up soon. But for now, this is my new space. I'm trying it out. Now that we've got that out the way, today I've decided to take a trip down memory lane as I've been doing for a while and actually look back at some interesting decks in all eras of Vanguard and talk about them. And one deck in the era of Vanguard that I do feel definitely didn't get all the love and respect that I thought it was going to get as it's been a part of the clan and the game since the very beginning was Nightmare Lands. And for all of my new people from V and Overdress, I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a little history recap on who they are and what they do and what was their game plan and why I'm just disappointed to see what their future ended up becoming. All right, so for my V players, you've probably already seen some of the Nightmare Land cards already, such as Alice in Nightmare Land, as well as Dark Knight of Nightmare Land for your Dark Irregular decks if you played that. But actually, Nightmare Lands were a series of cards that were introduced to us in the very first set of Dark Irregulars all the way back in the beginning of the game. They started off as an archetype that just mainly came out through triggers. They never were nothing more. All of your main Nightmare Land cards were just triggers. But then it wasn't until Generation Break set 8, Absolute Judgment, that their future changed. With the introduction of Absolute Judgment, which was the last set of, I believe, the second or the third season of G era, we got introduced to four main deck cards for the Nightmare Land archetype. These four cards were able to actually give the deck finally something that we just felt like we always wanted, which was a viable deck to play. And the best part about this deck was the fact that all the cards were common and rare, so it was a budget deck. The only card you actually had to invest in was the March Rabbit of Nightmare Land because it never got reprinted. This was a card that came out all the way back then, but at that point it wasn't really worth a lot of value because you weren't going to be playing a generic Dark Irregular Sentinel from way back in the day compared to all the cool stuff you had all the way in G. So now that I've gotten the history of the Nightmare Land cards out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about what these cards did and their play style and some of the crazy potential that this deck could have had. So as I stated to you before, the Nightmare Land cards came out actually in a set of triggers, but with the introduction of these four cards all in different grades, we were actually able to create a main deck of that that had a really generic, dark irregular style of play. The goal of this deck was to get as many copies of Nightmare Land cards from your deck into your soul. You rely on your main grade three, which was Hartrude, activate her ability for defensive reasonings, and then you go into your strides for offensive reasonings, while at the same time pumping up your soul with Nightmare Land cards for your rear guards to gain their effects and boost up your main vanguard. To get a better understanding of how this deck works and some of the cards that you really wanted to play with with the deck, we're gonna go ahead and now take a look into the awesome effects that these generic Dark Irregular cards have. So beginning this video off, I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the grade three of the deck, which was Dark Queen of Nightmare Land Hartrude, and she has the following effect. Queen of Nightmare Land Hartrude reads as, Auto on the Vanguard Circle, Generation Break 1. You may Counter Blast 1, choose one of your rear guards and retire it. When this unit attacks or is attacked, you may pay the cost. If you do, this unit gets plus 1,000 power for each card with Nightmare Land and its card name in your soul until the end of that battle. As I had stated earlier, the main goal of the deck was to build up as many Nightmare Land cards as possible into the soul so that this way, when you go into your defensive ability or offensive ability with Hartrude, if you ever wanted to, then you could get, boost up her number over time. The deck really did get better as the game progressed on, and that's one of the main strengths of just Dark Irregulars in general, because once you get more cards into your soul, that's when your later game gets better, and that's where a lot of decks do begin to fall off at, because a lot of decks at the time were just so focused on, you know, getting the rush in or trying to kill you on your first turn stride, but with Hartrude and her playstyle, having the defensive ability to stop poking or having the defensive ability to aid into the defense of bigger numbers because it's G era and this is stride. So if you've ever played premium, while the decks might not be as crazy 
as they are now in premium, trust me, you could still make some really amazing boards all the way back in the G era of Vanguard. But Hartru just enforces this play style and it's a good thing that she does too because she got some really awesome support cards that help her with this as well. The next card that I'm going to talk about in this video is actually a card called Dormus of the Nightmare Land, who's my favorite artwork looking card. So he reads the following effect as, Act. On the rearguard circle, generation break one, rest this unit, choose one of your vanguards and gets power plus 1000 for each card with Nightmare Land's card name in your soul until the end of the turn. Auto. When this unit is put into the drop zone from the rearguard circle, you soul charge one. Then if that is during your turn, choose one of your units with the Nightmare Land in its card name and it gets power plus 4000 until the end of the turn. So the second ability of this card is clearly meant to work with Hartrude as you want to choose this card for your target of retiring so that this way you can go ahead and get yourself a soul charge and potentially get another Nightmare Land card and boost up Hartrude's power by plus 1000 on top of the 1000 she's already getting from her own ability. Another important thing to note was the fact that this ability also works on your turn and back with G or just with Stride in general, if there are any dark regular cards that retire your own rear guards, I don't really remember that many, but if they do, you'll be also able to get the 4,000 powers of your Nightmare Land units because when you stride a card, you get their name and power, that's your heart. But the second ability, we don't really care too much about that one. It's really only good for the defensive purpose of that because we only want to use Hartrude for her defensive ability, not so much her offense because we're going to stride anyway back then. But it's the first ability that's very important. Now, this first ability might not look like much, but the reason why this is such a big deal is the fact that this card enforces something that I'm going to talk about later in the deck and what made the deck have a lot of potential in the future. But essentially, it rests itself and it becomes a hard shoot for your rear guard, choosing a card and pumping it by a thousand for every Nightmare Land stuff you have. Cool. Other three cards of the Nightmare Land deck weren't as amazing as these two cards were because these two cards, Dormoose and Hartrude, really did set the playstyle of what the Nightmare Land deck was going for in the future of what we thought it was going to be. But D essentially gets 2000 power for every copy she has of herself into the soul. And then she becomes a permanent 11k on the rear guard. Dumb has the ability to move itself into the soul and give one of your rear guards a thousand more power for every Nightmare Land has in the soul. But then if you choose D, you got a special effect from that. And then Spade Jack of Nightmare Land was just your starter of the deck who had the ability to let you put a card from your hand into the soul, draw a card, and then call it out when you stride. So overall, the Nightmare Lands were actually off to a pretty good start. Nothing too amazing, but in the future, we thought that it was all going to do really, really well. So we know the history of Nightmare Lands, and we know what they do, and we know what their playstyle was. Now this is where the deck really got interesting and where they had a lot of potential at. So as I stated before, I really want you to remember the Dormoose, the Nightmare Land ability, and this is why. So as you notice with Hartrude, Dormoose, and with the other Nightmare Land cards like Spade Jack of Nightmare Land, and for my premium players, another card that I'm talking about, the Monochrome of the Nightmare Land, we all noticed that the Nightmare Land cards, not only were they triggers, but you also had four main deck cards. What really made this deck have a lot of potential was the fact that this was one of the very few decks in the game of Vanguard that could be used as a splashable engine or a booster into other decks. And now I know what you guys are thinking, but just hear me out. When I say splashable is the fact that the Nightmare Land cards themselves were all trigger based, which means that you really just needed the Nightmare Land triggers in your main deck to really go ahead and get things off. You need a Heart True Desert Grade 3 and Dormoose, and you could choose to play Spade Jack either in the main deck or play more copies of it as your starter, but you weren't forced to it. You just needed to run it because it had the Nightmare Land name. But what really helped this deck out a lot was the fact that Dark Irregulars has a lot of strong cards in the game. Even their generic cards at the time are actually pretty strong. And not only that, they also had the introduction of their Darkness ability, which has been out for a while. And this deck heavily can support that as in Nightmare Land, since you only have, I believe it's three, yeah, since you only have three main deck monsters, such as the Grade 1, which was Dormoose, the Grade 2, which is Dumb, and then the Grade 3, which was Heart True, you had to fill your deck up with other cards because every, your other triggers were just going to be Nightmare Land. Besides, oh, March Rabbit of Nightmare Land, who was going to be your Sentinel for the deck. So having that means that you had a lot of space to the deck to actually add a bunch of cool different engines to your deck to make it a lot better. Hartrude had the ability to work well with Darkness because you can use your Darkness effects, which were all getting just a lot stronger at the time. And as we've seen in the future, if you look back at the history of Dark Irregulars, they got stronger in the future. But I'm talking... Future? 
they, she was able to take advantage of that because the deck was so generic that you could combine so many really good cards into the deck, which gave it a lot of potential. Uh, basically, what I'm saying is that any future dark irregular support that the deck got that wasn't limited to any other archetypes such as Blade Wings or Ammon, this deck could take advantage of because you just want to use Heart Truth for her defensive ability anyway to get the Nightmare Land cards in. And as long as you had the Nightmare Land triggers in the deck, it was going to be doing really well. Another thing that gave this deck a lot of potential was the fact that all the triggers in this deck are really, really awesome. So even though you had the Cheshire Cat of Nightmare Land, who was your heal trigger, which was generic, you did have some really amazing other cards as well. You had Dark Knight of Nightmare Land, who was just a generic critical trigger at the time, who just gave 3,000 power to a rear guard. And then you also had the other Nightmare Land card, which was D, who got added to it, who assisted with your plays down. She had the really cool effect of well, and was a Nightmare Land card. But what really helped the deck out a lot was the fact that you had one of the best supporting trigger cards for Dark Irregulars, which was Monochrome, and that had the Nightmare Land card in its name. So you got to take advantage of that card when playing your deck because not only was it a Nightmare Land card, but it fixed all the other little issues that your deck would have. It gave you soul, it was a trigger that put itself back into the deck, it gave you counter charge, and it even gave you draw. That is huge simply for just one card. So the trigger lineup for the deck when I played it was pretty set. I just wanted to play eight crit, four stand, and four heal. You didn't really need the draw in my opinion because while the draw would have been nice, you didn't want to miss out on any of the cool effects that Nightmare Land cards had because you want to take advantage of them all. Obviously with the rest of the deck, you had to max out the March Rabbit of Nightmare Land, the Dormoose, Dumb, which was the grade two, and then Hartrude, and then the rest of the deck was pretty much up to whatever it is that you wanted to do. You could play a darkness variation of the deck where you just use Hartrude's ability for defensive purposes and then combine all your other darkness skills so that this way you can create a deck that uses the combination of Dormoose to power up your rear guards that have all the Sentinel's trick abilities due to darkness. Really good cards and examples of this was Dopo Vampire, and then he did get outclassed later in the future by Baleful Repressor, but Nightmare Lands really were at their full peak when it came to Absolute Judgment because in the future you got Chaos <laughs> Breakers, so I'm only focusing on the Absolute Judgment variation of this deck. But it's just something that I wanted to note because the Darkness variation at the time was still really, really powerful. And if you didn't want to do that, you could play as simply just pure full Soul Charge variation of the deck, which actually focused around you Soul Charging as many copies of all your Nightmare Land cards and the souls you want. You didn't care about triggers or anything because your winning condition of the deck is the Abominable One Get Out of Days. Now you would use the Abominable One Get Out of Days and you'd stack so many cards into there and you combine D and Dormoose onto your Get Out of Days on top of your rear guards that had their guard restrict ability. And then you could just have a turn where essentially your opponent was only forced to guard with zeros and ones and it created this awkward circumstance because you'd have Get Out of Days in the center who can only who prevents you from guarding with grade one or higher units then you have these rear guards that says you can't guard their attacks with grade zeros so naturally you can see how they go and that throw your opponent off because they'd be forced to play the grade ones or their grade one or higher units on their rear guards and then they have to throw their zeros in the center but you have to stop one then guard the other and then guard that and in our deck we had a stand trigger that was able to be reusable so that means that we potentially had four to five attacks in a turn and we did play a lot of critical triggers as well that would have made the deck a lot better and in the future you do get a card called blader mouse who will put all of your zeros back into the deck so if you really wanted to play into that late game strategy you could really just survive in a blader mouse into the future which was in the i know it was three sets ahead but it's just a card i'm talking about now and then go ahead and move all of your triggers back into the deck and essentially play a deck full of triggers while sitting on hard true just becoming a fat tank that your opponent can't get through because you've got almost all your nightmare land cards of the soul putting her up to potentially 31,000 or up to 30,000 which was some reduces all the shielding that you had to do for your other attacks so nightmare land as a deck had a lot of potential simply because it was just a generic archetype that really just required you to play the nightmare land triggers these other nightmare land cards and having all of that in there just made the deck work. But unfortunately, that's not what we got. And I think that this is the part that really disappoints me with Bushi Road is the fact that Nightmare Lands got one set of main deck support. And then every set after that, all the way up until Divine Dragon Capper, which was the last set for G, we didn't get a single new Nightmare Land card, but we got really good Dark Irregular support throughout that time period, such as in the set of Demonic Advent, which did make the deck better, but Everything once Chaos Breaker Dragon became a really good deck did have a hard time dealing with that. But I just want to bring it up because Nightmare Land was, it was just a deck that 
personally for me seeing what lasted all the way to the beginning of the game and to see it not finish strongly enough at the end really did upset me and it made me very unhappy because as somebody who played this deck and played the budget deck variation i even played a competitive variation the deck did have a lot of you know potential and that's what i talked about in this video to really get better the only thing that just held the deck back so much was the fact that you didn't have the main deck nightmare land cards to play and if you did they would have to be just really really strong and suit the archetype in Nightmare Lands, all you had were the triggers, and that takes up 16 cards in your deck, your starter, which was 17. And then even if you played four copy of the other Nightmare Land cards, which you were locked into simply because of the way that the deck worked, you had to soul charge them. You still didn't have enough main deck Nightmare Land cards to get the soul charge in. Even if you took all of them, which was the March Rabbit, the Dormoose, and the Dumb of the Nightmare Land, and assuming you only played three of them to put into the soul because you wanted the one in your hand to use them for the game, you essentially only got nine cards into your soul. And that's just not good enough in Nightmare Land and you don't want to soul charge all your triggers because like I said, obviously not all your triggers can go back into the deck until we got Blader Mouse, which came out later. But Nightmare Land just, if it had more main deck Nightmare Land support, the deck definitely could have shot up to be a lot better. And before somebody comes at me at the comments talking about some, no listen i understand nightmare land was not going to be a top tier deck as in a pure nightmare land deck even if they did get support which we wouldn't have known because they didn't but my point is is the fact that this was a deck that just felt disappointed towards the end and i think that the nightmare land players out there were very sad because seeing a deck that did stick all the way to the beginning and didn't finish and then they just forgot about it towards the end was just really uh, heartbreaking to see. So unfortunately, you guys upset the queen of the Nightmare Land and it's off with your head. All right, you guys, so that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for joining me today and watching my talk about Nightmare Lands. If you guys enjoy more past and era videos like this of me give, talking, giving my personal opinion and experience on my playing these older decks, go ahead and let me know down in the comment section below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It does help the channel a lot. Also, subscribe and hit the notification bell. I know that I've been lacking on my daily posts. I know that I have been, but as you guys see, I moved into a new space and that's really what was slowing me down and just some other stuff in life, but I'm hopping back onto the game. So stay tuned. I also have my unboxing video, which is coming out tomorrow at the time of this video, because today is what? Today is the 22nd, so I'm gonna have my unboxing of my case, which I don't know if you guys can see, but I got in the corner over there. I have that also coming out tomorrow. So stay tuned for that, guys. Peace.